Imagine all the fish that we take out of the ocean. Now imagine a fifth of that. We take all of those fish and we feed them to other fish on fish farms to prevent overfishing. And if that sounds like a total cluster fish, it is. Whenever I order salmon at a restaurant, I pat myself on the back for getting a healthy dose of omega-3s. Omega-3s are a type of molecule called fatty acids, long chains of carbon molecules with a carboxylic acid group at one end and a methyl group at the other. They're important components of our cell membranes, keeping all the cytoplasm and organelles and cellular goop inside of our cells. While we humans can make some fatty acids, our bodies can only add important carbon-carbon double bonds to these chains at certain positions, not at the third position from the methyl end where omega-3 fatty acids have them. That's where the three in their name comes from. These double bonds in the fatty acid chains make cell membranes fluid and flexible. Since we can't make omega-3s ourselves, we have to get them from our diet, which basically means we have to get them from fish, at least for two of the most important ones, DHA and EPA. But here's the crazy thing. Fish don't make them either. Omega-3s are made by algae. The algae are eaten by plankton, the plankton are eaten by little fish, which are eaten by medium fish, which are eaten by big fish, and then finally by us. Globally, we eat over 40 pounds of fish per person each year. This means we have to catch a lot of fish, and many of the world's fish populations have suffered because of it. Species like the Norwegian herring and the Newfoundland cod were nearly fished to extinction between the 1960s and 1990s. So one thing to do about potential overfishing is just farm more fish, right? Ironically, farmed fish eat fish meal made from wild caught fish, mainly from species we don't eat much, like sardines and anchovies. 16 million metric tons of them every year. Those fish make up the basis of tons of food webs worldwide, so taking them out of the ocean is still kind of a big deal. It takes four tons of wild caught fish to generate one ton of aquaculture fish. We'll get to a point where there's a crunch. So we're looking for an alternative. What if we could just cut out the middle fish and just feed the farmed fish omega-3s directly from algae? When you think of algae, you probably think of blooms of little red and green photosynthetic organisms. Or maybe you think of kelp. You definitely don't think of kelp, but it actually is multicellular algae. So take this one, Schizochytrium. Somewhat unusually for algae, it feeds on decaying plant matter in a sort of boom and bust cycle. Where is this algae from? How does it live? What's it doing out there in the ocean? They live in this really hostile environment, thriving in this feast famine kind of situation where at high tide, they've got everything they need. At low tide, they have none of it. During high tides, Schizochytrium's environment is full of leafy debris, and they have special enzymes to chew through that tough plant matter to make the sugars they need for energy. When food is plentiful like this, they reproduce rapidly. But as the tide changes and food sources disappear, the algae hit the panic button. They convert those sugars into omega-3s to store energy for leaner times. From an evolution point of view, these kind of um, feast and famine situations have been sort of programmed into these cells. What gives the schizochytrium a leg up, or maybe a flagellum up, is its ability to make two kinds of omega-3s, DHA and EPA, the important ones that we have to get from fish. We first found out about this unique ability back in the 1980s, when NASA scientists started playing with the idea of sending algae to space to support astronauts on long-distance missions. Algae was seen as an option to not only be a food source, but also to clean the CO2 out of the air and then generate oxygen, both within uh, spaceships, but also on potential planetary settlements as well. Think of it like the Martian, but with algae instead of potatoes. And that's when they discovered Schizochytrium's unique boom and bust cycle and found a way to control it so that they could harvest omega-3s for fish farming. If you throw a dart at a map of the United States and aim right for the middle, you might hit Blair, Nebraska. There, about as far from either coast as you can get, are giant fermentation tanks full of Schizochytrium algae. The whole population of this six-story tall tank was seeded from a vial of algae just this big. 
Inside, scientists mimic the algae's natural cycle. First, they supply the algae with the sugar it needs to reproduce and rapidly divide, all from local beets, wheat, and corn. Hence, Nebraska. Then, they carefully tune oxygen, pH, salinity, and sugar levels in the tank to resemble the bust part of its natural cycle. So what do the algae do? They hit the panic button. They start fermenting sugar into omega-3 rich oil and store it in cellular vesicles. These organisms become very large in size and inside them are all these different little bubbles of fat. They are very, very smart at taking in the sugar and storing it away so no one else can get it. And by taking advantage of another environmental factor, the oxygen levels, scientists can get the algae to work overtime. When there's oxygen around, the algae uses an aerobic pathway to turn sugars into fatty acid chains. Then a series of elongase and desaturase enzymes build these chains up into longer and longer molecules. In low oxygen conditions, schizochytria switch gears to an anaerobic pathway to turn these sugars into omega-3s without these elongase and desaturase enzymes. This pathway uses an assembly line of different synthase enzymes, each performing one step of the carbon and double bond building process and feeding the growing omega-3s back into the cycle as they get longer and longer. Once the algal cells are full to bursting with the newly synthesized omega-3s, scientists introduce enzymes that break down their cell walls. Then the oil floats to the top where it's collected. One ton of this algal oil can replace the omega-3s from 60 tons of wild-caught fish. There are fish farmers in Norway already using it. This means if you're having Norwegian salmon for dinner, you do deserve a pat on the back for helping to break the vicious cycle of catching fish to feed fish. What is the most exciting part of your job? That often what we first thought was a mistake or an error in an experiment actually turns out to be the breakthrough. So not thinking of why didn't it work, but what is it telling us? That's the most interesting part.